morning children i feel extremely glad to meet you all on this wonderful day hope you are doing good and it's really a wonderful time to meet you all online after a long time and children things are very crucial nowadays kindly follow the instruction whatever your parents are giving you stay safe stay at home and uh, you you have got lot and lot of things to prepare for your uh, forthcoming exams you'll be having your exam for sure and the syllabus is the same so you have to concentrate much on your studies don't get deviated you are on the court you are set to do your uh, athletics you are set to march ahead so don't get deviated from your thoughts keep preparing for your exams uh, every moment that you sit with your book you are going to gain knowledge we have completed four lessons hope you have understood all the concepts and today we'll be moving into a new lesson a plant tissue culture this lesson is a very interesting and this lesson has got much of uh, commercial and social values as farmers being the main source of our food they sometimes find little struggle to supply the need of the population due to flood or due to the climatic uh, changes and sometimes due to insects which damage the crops but this plant tissue culture is uh, apart from the seasons we can grow those plants in any season in a control medium in the laboratory in the primary uh, preliminary growth and further after certain period of growth this plants are transferred to the external environment and is used to yield a good crop so plant biotechnology which involves the plant tissue culture is of more importance in today's science and technology so as a students it is a must you should know how to improve the production of our crops how to grow our crops how to cultivate our crops in the natural environment as well as in the laboratory condition that is what we'll be discussing in our today's class this plant tissue culture is a simple step i would like to explain it in a one single sentence where i take a small tissue from a plant and i make the tissue to grow into a plant this is it plant tissue culture how do we grow a plant generally we take a seed the seed is uh, sown in the soil we water it after some time it starts to sprout out the seed starts to germinate giving this first leaflets and the first rootlets so the plumule comes out of the soil and the radical uh, protrudes deep into the soil and after some times the root uh, starts to penetrate deep deep in the soil forming the primary root secondary root tertiary root rootlets and uh, they do their work similarly the part of the plant above the soil they keep growing the nodal region keeps increasing its size and the internodes are formed leaving out branches leaves are formed the leaves changes to buds the bud changes to flower and the flower changes to fruit and this is how the plant grow and certain period after this the fruit the flower has got the sex organ male sex organ female sex organ each bearing its own gametes this gametes they come together fertilization takes place and a fruit is formed this fruit consists of seeds and we take the seeds and uh, again the cycle continues to move on we call it as reproduction and this is how the plants are cultivated in nature but in plant tissue culture we are not going to take a seed we are not going to sow it it's not going to sprout out it's not going to germinate but instead we are going to take only a tissue of that plant some plants may be rare plants which we cannot wait for the seeds and to grow it into a new plant so those in such condition we take only the tissues the tissue is made to multiply we call this as the plant tissue culture 
any tissue can be taken the tissue from the root the tissue from the leaf the tissue from the stem so the tissue is taken and it is formulated in certain procedures and it is allowed to grow into a new plant for this production of a new plant from a tissue before moving further on let's study what is a tissue you must be knowing it a group of cells are called the tissues then what is a cell cell is the basic structural and functional unit of a plant so this basic structural and functional unit the cell they combine together to perform a single function which we call it as the tissue so now you are going to take a tissue this tissue is going to be inoculated incubated and this tissue undergoes morphogenesis and produces a new plant how does this happen it takes place by four basic principles the first one is uh, totipotency second one is differentiation third is dedifferentiation and the fourth one is redifferentiation so four concepts basic concepts for plant tissue culture you should be able to know it the first one is totipotency what is totipotency Totipotency is the ability of the plant tissue to grow into a new plant. Again, let me come back to the basic topic, children. Tissue is a group of cells. It doesn't have an organ. It doesn't have an organ system. It doesn't perform any kind of particular function. It is simple a raw tissue. But this tissue is now going to get transformed into a plant. so we call this particular phenomenon as the totipotency the ability of a tissue that is a group of cell to grow into an entire plant a plant consists of root stem branches leaves so all these will be present there all these are produced from a small tissue this transformation this ability is called as the totipotency i repeat again the basic first principle in plant tissue culture is totipotency which is the ability of a plant cell to grow into an entire tissue entire plant so after that what happens we have learned in our first lesson about the cells there are two types of cell one is the meristematic tissue the other one is the permanent tissue what happens in meristematic tissue can you just recollect and tell me what will happen over there the meristematic cells has the ability of continuous cell division they will keep on undergoing cell dividing one cell divides to 2 2 to 4 4 to 8 8 to 16 16 2 to 34 and it keeps on going and the number of cell increases so cell division takes place the ability of the cell to undergo cell division is called meristematic condition so tissues are basically divided into meristematic and permanent so meristematic tissues they have the ability to undergo continuous cell division now what is this permanent tissue at certain stage of the growth the meristematic tissue stops its cell division they will not undergo cell division it stops its division and attains a certain maturity which we call it as the permanent cell okay this permanent cell is does, doesn't come all of a sudden from heaven it is a transformation of the meristematic tissue so meristematic tissue which was undergoing continuous cell division at certain stage it stops its cell division and under transforms to a permanent tissue where the cell division does not take place we call this process as differentiation so second phenomenon called the differentiation what is differentiation the meristematic cell having the ability of cell division now stops its action and becomes a permanent cell so this is the second concept called the differentiation let's move into the third topic called redifferentiation now this uh, permanent tissue 
which has stopped its cell division now starts to grow into an entire plant so the permanent tissue is not staying as a tissue but it starts to develop into a new plant we call this process as redifferentiation the last fourth topic is dedifferentiation i have told three differentiation one is differentiation a redifferentiation and dedifferentiation we'll see what is dedifferentiation before that what is differentiation the meristematic tissue matures stops its cell division and attains a stage called the permanent state which we call it as the differentiation now what is a, a dedifferentiation it is the reversal of differentiation just a simple phenomenon simple equation is reversal of differentiation so what happened in differentiation you are going to just revise the meristematic changed to permanent so in dedifferentiation it is reversal what happens the permanent tissue loses its ability and goes back again to continue cell division now the permanent tissue didn't have the ability to undergo cell division isn't it that is why we called it as redifferentiation process but now in the de differentiation de differentiation this permanent tissue it's losing its ability and again turning back to undergo the cell division so these are the four basic concept to understand the plant tissue culture totipotency ability of a tissue to grow into a new plant differentiation the meristematic tissue stops its cell division and attains a permanent uh, stage and the redifferentiation this permanent tissue now grows into an entire plant and the final fourth stage dedifferentiation the permanent tissue loses its uh, permanency and again start to undergo cell division so these are the four topics a uh, four basic concept you should understand before proceeding into the lesson now if i'm going to culture a plant as a plant tissue culture method what are the things i should do so that is more important if i'm going to prepare a a, 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 a laddu or a clove jamun i have to prepare certain things to do it i cannot simply stand in a, in my veranda and do it i should go to kitchen i should prepare my utensils i should take all the ingredients similarly to do this plant tissue culture i need certain things first of all this growth of plant is taking place in the laboratory so i should have a perfect lab so what are the conditions that should be present inside a lab we can we will uh, see those uh, requirements for the plant tissue culture the four things that you require in your lab i hope you all have visited your uh, laboratory in your school that is physics lab chemistry lab botany lab zoology lab for your practical similarly this plant tissue culture lab should have water facilities it should have a sink with the water inlets and outlet for washing the utensils so this is the first requirement second it must be fully sterilized the entire lab must be sterilized even the apparatus there the woodwares the windows uh, the chairs the gloves everything must be sterilized so it must be a sterilized environment because we are going to culture tissue if we don't sterilize there are much possibility for the microorganisms to get grow along with our uh, plant so sterilization procedures must be there and autoclaves to eat the apparatus for sterilizing we need to bake we need to eat the uh, glassware so we need an autoclave what is an autoclave autoclave is much similar like an eater so you will have a small refrigerator like a container or sometimes it may be a cooker like container in which we keep all our utensils which need to be sterilization and we put up the temperature and close it for certain minutes so that the entire thing is sterilized and we take it up and while entering into the lab and moving out of the lab there must be a air chamber laminar chamber where the air is blown on our body so that it washes the microorganism even if it is stuck in our uh, body 
when you enter into pothis you will find as the entrance you will have a very big air chamber which will just wash our uh, body as we enter inside with a bunch force of it similarly the lab should have an air flow chamber to wash our uh, our body and our dress so that the microbes stuck in our uh, system will be taken away so these are the basic requirements that a plant tissue culture lab should have now let's move into the procedures what are the procedures that takes place in the plant tissue to the techniques the procedures that we have to follow in a plant tissue culture the very first step is sterilization as i told you before if we are not taken much care in sterilization along with the tissue there are much possibility for the microorganisms to grow at the end of uh, the la at, at the end of the day our experiment will be a failure because instead of growing the plant we had allowed the microorganisms to grow so sterilization is very very important a uh, sterilization is done by basic four uh, uh, methods four things has to be sterilized first we'll uh, have to sterilize our apparatus our uh, glass wares our petri dish conical flask our uh, forceps all these things need to be sterilized this has to be done in an autoclave with 121 degree celsius for 15 minutes and after that they are free from the microorganisms the second is we have to sterilize our lab our room environment it has to be washed or mopped with a disinfectant all the tables chairs the glass coverings the panels uh, the files whatever is inside the lab it has to be completely washed or uh, cleaned with a disinfectant so that is the second kind of sterilization which we have to do and the third sterilization is with our nutrient medium this uh, tissue it cannot grow on its own it need a medium on which the tissue starts to grow so the nutrient medium need to be sterilized this is again done by keeping it in the autoclave for uh, uh, 120 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes and it is just heated to kill the microorganism in case if it is present and uh, to this uh, we have cotton plex okay so the cotton plex also need to be sterilized cotton plex is nothing but a roll of cotton which is used to close the mouth of the conical flask so that also need to be sterilized and the fourth sterilization is for the explant what is an explant a part of the plant which is removed from the mother plant is called the explant if i'm going to take a tissue from a leaf i'll pluck the leaf from the plant so that particular leaf is called the explant because from this leaf only i'm going to take away the tissue so whichever part i'm taking away from the plant for my experiment is going to be called as the explant so this explant had to be sterilized uh, the best so first it has to be washed with running water then with a the distil water then with 1% uh, mercury chloride solution then again with the ethanol then with the running water so that the if in case any dis if uh, infecting uh, microorganisms are present they will be washed away now these are the four ways in which we prepare our lab for the experiment so first thing is sterilization sterilization of our uh, glassware sterilization of our uh, lab things sterilization of our nutrient medium and the fourth one is sterilization of our explant so now we are ready for our experiment what's next we need the glass materials culture medium we call it as culture medium success of every plant tissue culture depends upon the composition of the uh, medium that we take as i told you before culture medium is a source of energy on to this medium we keep the tissue this tissue takes the nutrient from this uh, culture medium and it starts to grow okay so it is much like a soil for a growing plant a plant cannot grow without a soil because soil consists of the nutrient the same way here we in the lab we cannot use the soil but instead of that we have nutrient medium the medium itself consists of much of nutrient so this nutrient medium the composition of the nutrient in it makes our plant tissue culture a successful one 
there are basically four uh, different types of nutrient medium uh, b5 medium white medium niche medium gambog medium so these are the medium oh, they differ based upon the compositions of the nutrients so the nutrients plays an important role in determining the uh, different types of the medium so this medium is also ready our uh, culture vessels as i've told you before we need a conical flask into that conical flask we are going to pour this uh, nutrient medium and uh, inside the nutrient medium you are going to take a tissue from the explant and place it into the conical flask and cover the conical flask with a cotton plug this is what we are going to do for doing this we need forceps we need uh, certain more apparatus to do it so now medium is ready our apparatus is ready conical flask is ready cotton plug is ready our forceps are ready and now the nutrient medium is ready and before that our explant is ready so everything is ready now we are moving into the next step we have to maintain the ph of the nutrient medium if you take the ph there are uh, two extremes one is acidic the other one is basic so we should uh, check our nutrient medium what mode it is whether it is acidic or it is basic mostly the ph must be maintained between 5.6 to 6 so that is the uh normal ph mode for the plant to grow so we should check that before introducing the plant uh, tissue into the nutrient medium so ph has to be checked so this is the third step let me again recall what we have discussed the first thing is sterilization after sterilization we have gone with the nutrient medium then we have checked our ph medium has to be checked up the temperature must be 25 plus 2 Or minus two, not more than that. That is, it may be twenty-three degrees Celsius to twenty-seven degrees Celsius. So that is the basic common uh, temperature for the tissue to grow. Light intensity, it must be between sixty lux light. So the cool, white, pleasant light. And one more thing is, the light has to be maintained with a photo period of sixteen hours. So sixteen hours, the light should go. Okay, now inside the lab. how can i bring my light can i direct my sunlight into the lab that's not possible it's mostly not possible so what we do is we have uh, illuminated bulbs the bulbs are stuck on the walls of our chamber in which we are going to do our experiment and inside that the light will be on according to the intensity that is required for the plant if it is uh, in need of 60 lux then we set it up to 60 with a cool white pleasant light atmosphere that too for 16 hours after 16 hours it has to be switched off and it has to undergo a dark period so photo periodism of 16 hours of light and remaining hours of darkness so this is how we have to maintain the light coming to aeration how does it get air see i have already told you we have a conical flask inside the conical flask the materials are kept and it is closed with the rubber uh, sorry cotton plug so how do i let in the aeration is this cotton plug it can allow the air to go inside oxygen can enter inside air can move inside the cotton plug acts like a filter this cotton plug filters the microorganisms it prevents the entry of the microorganisms but allows the oxygen to go inside so cotton plug kept on the mouth of the conical flask will allow the air to penetrate deep inside so air can go inside uh, so aeration is possible and one more thing what we do is frequently we take the culture uh, material and just shake so that the solution is not kept stagnant so when we move automatically the molecule starts to circulate randomly and there is a place space for the uh, aeration to take place so we keep shaking the culture medium this also helps in the aeration fresh aeration in the culture medium so we start we saw about the ph temperature light and about the interesting topic is uh, induction of the calyx 
So before uh, moving into that, let's see what is callus. Callus is a, a group of tissues. Cell, group of cell is called a tissue. Now a mass, undifferentiated mass of tissue is called the callus. Now we are going to induce, induct them. We call it, we also call it as induction. How do we do it? As I told you, we have an explant that is a part of the tissue that is removed from a plant which is sterilized with distilled water which is washed with the chemicals and now they are uh, induced into a, a conical flask having the nutrient medium. This nutrient medium consists of various minerals to help the plant to grow. Along with the minerals, they also have two hormones. Oxane and cytokinin. This oxane helps in cell division and cell elongation. As we know, the entire process is growing a plant from a tissue. So if you want to grow a plant, this tissue need to undergo cell division. And after the cell division, the cell need to enlarge in its size. That is very important. Only if the cell keeps dividing, there is no use in it. The divided cell has to undergo cell enlargement. So this cell enlargement or cell elongation is done by the hormone called the auxin. So what does the other hormone do? It initiates cell division. So a group of cell, this tissue keeps on dividing again and again and again and again on one side. This dividing cell keeps on enlarging its size in the other side. At the end, what is that we are getting is they started to grow into a undifferentiated mass of cells. This is called the induction. To do this, as I said before, we need temperature. The temperature must be 25 degrees Celsius plus or minus and the light intensity must be 60 lux. That is for 12 to 16 hours hours of uh, photoperiodism and it should have uh, a pH of uh, 5.6 to 6 pH should be maintained. So these are the various steps which we have to take it. Under this period the tissue starts to divide itself and to grow into a new plant. We call this particular process as morphogenesis. Genesis always indicates creation. So something is going to be created, we call it as morphogenesis. So morphogenesis here, it's of three different processes. We call it as organogenesis, rhizogenesis, caliogenesis. So what are these three different types of genesis? Before that, what is morphogenesis? Morphogenesis is nothing but development of the external organs of a plant from a group of undifferentiated mass of tissues. We say again, there are undifferentiated mass of cells which is resulted due to the differentiation of the tissues. This mass of cells is taking its second level of growth that is forming the organs, the root or the stem or the leaf this differentiation we call it as morphogenesis formation of the organs from an undifferentiated mass of tissues if root is formed if that particular tissue is helping in the formation of the root the primary root secondary root tertiary root root adds then that is called the rhizogenesis similarly if that particular tissue is enabling them to form the stem branches leaves then it is called the caliogenesis so two types of genesis if shoot is formed it is called caliogenesis if root is formed it is called rhizogenesis altogether these two come under organogenesis because the root as well as the stem leaf they are called the organs so as a uh, combined statement we call it as the organogenesis so morphogenesis consists of three different uh, growth creation organogenesis uh, rhizogenesis and the caliogenesis so now the tissue is formed it is in the conical flask or it is in the test tube now this small plantlet starts to produce this small plantlet is growing in what medium nutrient medium
medium a soft nutrient under the laboratory condition we cannot allow the plant to grow in the laboratory condition forever this plant has to be transferred to the natural environment how to do it the process is called hardening then comes the final step hardening hardening is a step where the plant that is grown in the laboratory in the culture in the closed environment is now exposed to the external environment they are taken planted in a tray consisting of soil soil is a rough surface so the plant is planted onto the soil and it is watered the first time the plant is going to be watered water is going to pour on the plant and third is they are exposed to sunlight direct sunlight so we call this process as the hardening this takes place when we transfer the plantlets from the test tube to the tray and expose it to the sunlight now after some time we find this particular plant which started its journey in the lab from a tissue started to grow as a normal plant as a very much as a normal plant as that one which grown from a seed as how we sow a seed and water it and allow it to grow no similarly this plant also starts to grow you cannot find any difference between them whether it is a plant uh, cultured plant or it is a normal plant they show much uh, much healthier growth when they are exposed to the external environment so children these are the various uh, steps that is involved in the plant tissue culture hope you understood all those things let me make a small recapitulation uh, we started with uh, the four basic concepts tertiary differentiation de differentiation re differentiation so the four concepts then we moved on to, into the requirement for our lab what are the requirements what are the things needed for me to have my own plant tissue culture laboratory then third is we went moved into the uh, steps or the procedures techniques in the plant tissue culture we discussed about sterilization nutrient medium uh apparatus culture vessels ph temperature aeration light induction then the organogenesis and finally the hardening i hope you would have understood uh, all these concepts keep uh, learning refer it with your textbook if at all you have any doubts just uh, contact me to clear your doubts and we'll continue the rest of the things in our next class and the assignment that i would like to give you is just read all the techniques the step wise techniques that takes place and uh, the basic concepts for uh, plant tissue culture is a very important question the four concepts so learn those four concepts and learn about uh, the topic that we have discussed uh, with you till we meet in the next class stay home stay blessed obey your parents that's more important children keep learning be positive keep moving uh, a day will come when we all meet together bye we'll meet in the next class thank you children